Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name's Jack. Some of you guys might know me. One of my friends asked me to um, make like a video talking about first order and zero third reactions. So I hope this helps. Um, let's jump right into it. Uh, so what's rate exactly? Rate is if we were to draw a graph, right? And we have on the y-axis we have x, which is amount of drug. Um, let's put x prime, whatever amount of drug, and then um, on the x-axis it's t. So if we draw a line, the rate is pretty much the slope of this line. So how do you find slope? Slope is easy. The slope is, um, you know, change in y over change in x, referring to the axis. So the change in y-axis would be the change in x prime, right? The change in x prime over the change in x-axis is change in t. Pretty easy, right? You know, the change in, um, that's the change in x, and then this is the change in t. <clears throat> so then this is pretty much rate, and you can also express this as um, the triangle just means delta, and for delta you can use d, so dx over dt is also equal to rate. So how does this apply to first order and zero order reactions? So let's take a look. Um, let's go scroll down a bit. Let's keep this open. Um, so let's say for first order, right? First order we have rate or dx over dt, same thing, is equal to what? All right, so the basic equation for rate is k to the x to the n. So what is n here? n is pretty much 1 because it's first order, right? So you can replace this as 1. So then this pretty much becomes kx. So rate of first order reactions is kx. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, let's move on to zero order. Let's, let me show you the difference. Zero order reactions. It's pretty much the same thing, right? Like I said, rate and dx over dt is equal. It's pretty much the same thing. So then you have kx. So what's n here? n is going to be zero, right? Because it's zero order. So n. And x, we know x to the zero is one. So then this pretty much equals k. So you have rate here is equal to k. And we have rate on the other side is equal to kx. So what does that mean? That pretty much means that the first order reactions are dependent on your starting constant, starting amount. So if you have more x to begin with, you're going to have a faster rate, which just makes sense, right? It's directly proportional. So if you have, um, we're going to call that dependent, right? The rate is dependent on x. So if you have more x, you'll have a faster rate. And what does rate mean really? In, um, in biopharm, it's mostly going to be rate of elimination. So if you have more drug to begin with, you're going to have faster elimination. It just, you know, that's just the way it works. And in zero order, rate is k. So it's going to be a constant no matter what. It doesn't matter if you have a big x to start with, or if you have little x to start with, in zero order reactions, rate is going to be a constant. Whatever you, whatever k you have, it's going to stay that way. Okay, so we can say it's independent, independent uh, of x. So just one more thing to touch upon. We have um, k on both of these. Both of these equations have k in it, but they mean different things. So K in first order reactions, let's actually do zero order reactions first. K is rate, right? We see that K is equal to rate. And most likely it's gonna be double elimination. So I'll just write double in. What's K here? K isn't really rate. KX is rate, right? So what's K? K is gonna be the rate constant. And notice the, the word constant, it's gonna be the same no matter what. Whatever you start with, you're gonna have but x, like I said before, it's going to be dependent on x, so x is really going to be the influencing factor on rate in first order reactions. So let's write this down. First order, we'll look at half life. First order, half life. First order, half life. Okay, so, okay, so we have half life. And what is half life? Half life is just um, the amount of time it takes to get to 50% of your starting amount, right? So if you start at 100%, how long does it take you to get to 
50% to get to half. That's pretty much what half life is, right? Really simple. Um, so the equation for, and you can derive this. Um, I'm not going to really derive it, but the Xiao, you know, he derives it in class. But the equation for half life is, you know, for first order reactions is this natural log of 2 over k. Pretty simple, right? Now let's look at um, zero order. What's the equation for zero order half life? Um, half life for zero order reactions, it's a little bit different. You can derive it, and it's going to be CO over 2K. Okay, so let's kind of compare it, compare and contrast these equations. Um, let's look at um, first order, and we'll see that the only influencing factor on half-life is going to be k, because ln2 really is equal to 6.93. If you, you know, plug in the calculator, you calculate it at 6.93. But k is going to be what's influencing your half-life. Right? So there's no x in here. There's no c in here. And we'll talk about this later in just a bit. But there's no x, there's no c. So it just means that half-life is independent of x or you know or c it doesn't really matter they're both kind of similar um c is just um divided by mel and um it's independent right what did we just say before for rate rate is dependent rate for first order is dependent so easy way to remember this is um if you know that, um, let me just write it, if you know one of them, right, if you know half-life, if you remember, oh, you're taking the test, you remember, okay, half-life is independent, that that must mean that rate of first order is going to be dependent, right, so I'll just write it here, rate dependent of x, okay, and now if we look at zero order, it's pretty much the same thing, we see it a CO here, so there's two factors influencing it. We're going to have um, K is going to influence it, but we're also going to have C is going to influence it. So um, we'll just have, you know, so we can say that half life is dependent on C or X, like said, doesn't matter, and then rate is independent of x, right? And why does this work, really? Why is it that time uh, half-life is independent and rate is dependent here? You know, it's dependent, independent, whatever. All this. So let's let me let me just give you an example that kind of helps me understand it. Um, it's the green. So we know. Let's um, just rewrite it real quick. And here's my little example. Okay, so let's say that we'll work with first order first. Let's say we know a guy, right? This guy, let's call him, um, I don't know, let's call him Justin. Okay, Justin, he's not, not that smart, okay? You know, he's pretty average in school, and um, he doesn't make that much money, so. Let's say he has 20 bucks. 20 bucks, right? $20 in my pocket. All right, so it takes him um, one day to spend half of it, right? So one day to spend 10 bucks. Okay, it's pretty normal. Now let's say one day just, Justin wins the lottery and he has a thousand bucks. So this dude's balling now. He has a thousand bucks, right? But he's not smart, like I said, you know? He doesn't save it. So it takes him one day to spend 500 bucks, to spend half of it, right? Because it, it's always going to take him one day to spend half of the amount. So this is the analogy with, um, in, refer, in reference to half-life. The half-life is going to be the same no matter what. Half-life is pretty much a constant because, remember, K is, you know, rate constant, right? Rate constant. So half-life is not going to change. It's not going to be dependent on how much you start with, right? So he starts with 20 here. 
or he starts with a thousand, it doesn't matter. It's going to take him one day in the end to get down to half of it. And how's it, how, did, how does this relate to rate? Well, he's just spending more, right? His rate of spending has increased because he has more money, right? Because rate is dependent on um, your starting amount. And if he has 20 versus 1,000, obviously he has 1,000. 1,000 is more. So his rate of spending is going to be more, right? So his rate of spending here is 10 bucks a day. But his rate of spending here is 500 a day, which makes sense. So ultimately, just, just to summarize, um, his half-life is constant. So let's say same half-life, but his rate has increased because rate is dependent, in first order, rate is dependent on your starting amount. Okay, so whatever, let's move on. Let's think of another guy and we'll have this guy, uh, let's call him, I don't know, Sagar. let's call him Sagar. Um, so Sagar, he has, um, Sagar is smart, right? He's smart, he gets a little bit, his grades are a little higher. He has 20 bucks and he has a thousand, no, let's just do 20 first. So he has 20 bucks. And the same situation, he takes one day to spend half of it, so one day to spend 10 bucks. Now he wins the lottery and he has a thousand bucks. But you know, Sagar's smart, so he says, okay, I'm not gonna spend all of it in one day. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, you know, space it out evenly. So let's say, just make a random number, let's say it takes 20, it takes 25 days to spend $500, just spend half. So you can obviously see the difference right here, right? It takes Sagar 25 days to spend half, whereas Justin took one day to spend half. Okay, so how does this relate to zero or the equations? Well, it's easy. Um, time half, uh, half-life is, going to be dependent on your concentration or your starting amount. So if you have more money, right, he has more money, 20 versus 1,000, his half-life is going to increase, right? So let's do half-life increases, right, because it's dependent. Uh, same, what is it? Oh, half-life increases. What about his rate of spending? Well, if we look here, we'll see that his rate of spending right here is 10 bucks a day, right? He spends 10 bucks a day. What about here? Well, we'll find that rate is a constant in physical order, right? It's a constant. So rate is going to be a constant. And if we divide 500 bucks by 25 days, we get, um, how much did we get? 20? Okay, this is actually a bad example. Let me, um, Okay, whoops, oh, bad example, bad example, bad example. Let's do 50, let me change this to 50, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna change this to 50, it takes him 50 days. 50 days to spend 500, okay, sorry, bad example. And um, his rate of spending is gonna be 500 bucks per 50 days, which is, you know, this is the point I was trying to prove. The rate of spending is gonna be the same so rate is the same. And we can see it's opposite. So if we know that the first order is, first order rate is gonna be dependent, we know automatically time half-life is gonna be independent. We know that zero order is gonna be independent and we know that time half-life, I mean, I mean, we know that half-life for zero order is gonna be dependent. So that's pretty much what it is. You just have to kind of work around it and memorize. If you memorize one of them, you'll memorize all of them. So that's all. Um, let me know if you have any questions.